Alrighty then. So there's going to be geometry and our objective is uh, construction something. There it is. So today, 8, 14, 18. So it's the same thing that you're going to see on 3.1. So if you guys are still updating this. So kind of try and fit it in there if you can on page six, seven, today's date. So that's everything. As you come into class and you see it on the board, you guys need to make sure you guys are updating that right away. That's the first thing you do as we're coming into class. Okay, it's already on the page. So let's go to six and seven. So now I'm gonna start Okay, cool down's gonna go last. Cool down's gonna go last, so I'm gonna set that aside. I'm starting with 3 1 here. All right, so everyone has their compasses right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Very good. All right. So, class. Yes. You're all paying attention right now, right? Yes. Okay. It says, step one says, mark five points that are distance CD away from point A. Now, distance CD, what does that mean? Measure it, right? So basically, stab C and open a D, right? Let's do that. Stab C, open to D. So that is the measure CD, right? Now, if it is CD away from point A, if it is CD away from point A, let's try and make a point out of it. So, that means if it's from point A, what do I do? Stab A, very good. Stab A. So, make a point somewhere here. Okay, it's not getting the whole thing because I only need five points, right? So where are those points going to go? I heard it. On the circle. Those points are going to go on the circle, right? So somewhere on the circle, they're going to go there. So go ahead and make your five points that are on the circle. Sharpening the compass pencil? Yeah. Oh, I got a little thing here for it. It makes it easier. Oh. I cannot see that. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. All right. So, did you have five points around that circle? No. Anywhere. Anywhere. It just said make five points that are CD away from it. So I'm making five points now let's let's look at the second part of that how do you describe all points that are distance CD away from point A why is all those points on the circle they're all what? Very good. They all are CD away from point A. But by doing that, what was CD for that circle? What part is CD of that circle? 
CD is the blank. What is diameter? Isn't diameter all the way across? It's the radius, isn't it? Yeah. So CD is the radius. So CD is the radius. So how can we describe all points that are distant CD away from point A? So all points in the circle Okay, so I put all points in the circle are CD from point, oh, I was supposed to put A there, and I put the radius, point A, because it is the radius of the circle. Yes? Okay. All right, so let's see, number two says mark five points that are distance CD away from point B. So what does that mean? Stab C and open to D and then do what? Stab B and make another circle, right? Okay, let's do it. So stab B make another circle here. Now, make your five points around that. It says make five, mark five points that are distant CD away from point B. matter where they're at are all of them the same distance away from B yeah. each one is the same distance away from B isn't it yeah. yes yeah very good how can you describe all points that are a distance CD away from B same thing that we have here right yeah okay so we would say all points in the circle R C D from point B because it's the radius. Are we okay there? You guys ready for the next one? It says, in a different color, mark all points that are a distance CD away from both A and B. So everyone, right now, mark that in a different color. You guys all got different colors in the box. Okay, you guys got a box of colored pencils in there. So it doesn't matter what color you use, you're just using something different than what you had in the first place. 
And I know no one's got no earbuds in right now. Thank you. I'm going to call on people momentarily here, so hopefully you are paying attention to this. Let's see. I'm going to start by calling on... Let's go, Alex. How are you doing? How many points do we got there? On one circle? Nope, it says right here. How many points are CD away from both A and B? Oh, three? I mean, four? Four? Not this time. Okay, so... Let's try again. So now, volunteers, what do we got? Ten. Ten. Nope. Five. Say it loud and clear. Five. Nope. One, six, two, ten. N no over here. What do we have over there? Why? I heard a two over there. Who said two? Where'd you get two from? And one is the loneliest number there could ever be, right? 18. Tell me why two. A and B. A and B? No, not because A and B. I'll tell you the answer is two, but can you tell me why? Because what? What about the circles? Come on now. It is away from B. Very good. Say it loud and clear. It's where the two circles overlap, isn't it? If I look right here, I have a point here, and I have a point here. Here's my distance, CD, and my distance, CD, right? Those two overlap, don't they? So that's where they intersect. The word that we're using for this is intersect. So where my two circles intersect are both going to be the radius apart. All right, so we marked it right there, a different color. You guys got that? Okay, so now that's going to leave us to 3.2. Okay, we're going to have to get up and do this here in a second. So I'm going to read the instructions because I'm recording this right now. All right, your teacher will mark points A and B on the floor. Decide where to stand so you are the same distance from point A as you are from point B. Think of another place you could stand in case someone else has already taken that spot. After everyone sits down, draw a diagram of what happened. Hurrah. All right, so let's take a look at my diagram. So we just went through, okay? You guys had point A and you had point B and we draw something. So what that person over there that has to always wear sunglasses even when it's dark in here, okay? Obvious. 
All right, so let's take a look. What did I just do with my paper right there? All right, so you guys have your drawing, right? Now I'm looking for mine, because I just drew it. So, we basically, we took our straight edge, there is my point A, there is my point B, and somewhere in the middle, along this, we had everyone line up, right? Yeah, I'm not going to draw all 34 people here, though. All right, and to show we said that each person should be the same distance. Same distance, right? So each person is the same distance from A and B, if I did that correctly. So, but we didn't use any tools yet to make a exact perfect line here. Yes? Okay. Now, you guys all got patty paper, right? Yeah. Now, I'm gonna take my patty paper now, whatever I'm drawing on patty paper, try to use the rough side, not the waxy side. Yes, there's two different sides. One side's waxy, smoother than the other. It says, if you use the rougher side, it's easier to write on. It says right here, trace segment PQ on the tracing paper. So I have my Okay, use only different color pencil to draw your best attempt at perpendicular bisector. Do not use any other tools. So we're tracing first. There we go. Now, vocabulary Perpendicular bisector. So let's start with the bisect part. What does bi mean? Two. Sect. It's like dissect. What do you do when you dissect something? Do you cut it open? Take it apart. You cut it. Okay. So if we're bisecting, we are cutting it in two. Now, for this one, we're cutting it into two equal parts. So, bisect, we're cutting it into two equal parts. So, we're going to try and bisect it now. Perpendicular. What does perpendicular mean? Yes, yeah, very good with the hand signal there. But what does it do? What type of angle do we have there? Anyone remember? It's a right angle, isn't it? It's a 90 degree angle. It's a right angle. So you're trying to draw one that is a perpendicular, so it's going to cut it into equal parts, and bisect, so it's at 90 degree angle. So go ahead and try it on your own. So you're trying to do it with no tools, no cheating.
Okay, do you guys have yours on there? All right, very good, let's see. Use paper folding to decide which perpendicular bisector in your group is the best. So now, to see if this is actually perpendicular bisector, I'm gonna put point P onto point Q. So fold your paper to put P onto Q. Alright, if yours was perfect, what happened? What should happen? What should happen? Where should my line be? On the fold, thank you, that's what I was looking for. The line should be on the fold if I did it right. Okay, so mine did not come out very well. I tried, okay, slightly off. Okay, I'm slightly off. Now, it's close, but it's still off. So it's not perfect right there, so that wouldn't work out. Okay, so the person with the best perpendicular bisector in your group will attempt to bisect the segment my teacher has drawn. Ah, nope, let's don't go that far. I'm gonna go to the next part here. Okay, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna go down to the cool down and then come back to answering this question. So we did those ones right here, so now let's take a look at that cool down. And this is just like that classroom problem that we got there. You gotta find the one for first hour. All right, here's my classroom problem. So if this was like my classroom problem, this is point A and point B, right? It says, imagine you must cross the hallway while staying equal distance from each laser. If you get close to one laser, closer to one laser than the other, it will blast you. Use a compass and straight edge to draw a safe path through the room. So, we're gonna do kind of like what we did with the warm up, the first thing, the 3.1, and the thing that we did in the classroom. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna draw a line connecting the two lasers. So please do that. Draw a line connecting your two lasers. That was like connecting point A and B there. So that's a start. Okay, yes. Now, since we want it to be equidistant, I want it the same distance. So now, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take my compass. If I find my compass, there it is. And I'm gonna stab laser one. Stab laser one and measure it to you. Now, stab laser two and measure it to you also. What do you know about that? I got three people having a powwow back there. I know you're paying attention, right? Because I don't see a compass in your hand. Yes. All right, are they equidistant? Are they both the same? Yes. Okay, so now we're gonna do this. So now since we measured it from laser one to you, 
I'm going to draw a circle in the room there. Through you, What did I stab? Oh, I measured it to you. So stab from the laser to you. So again, stab the laser. Measure to you. And now do it from laser one. Mark it right here. So now, think about what we did when we lined up in the class. Where was the center right here? Yeah, it was right here, wasn't it? Right down the middle. Now think about what we did on the warm-up when we started that one. Where were the points that were equidistant from A and B? Where my two circles did what? Very good. So where the two circles intersect. So I'm going to mark those points. Those are my two points where they're equidistant from each other. Those are the two points that are equidistant. And now from here, what should I do from here? Think about what we did in the classroom. What do we do in the classroom here? Everyone was where? In the middle. So now think of this as the person that was standing over here and the person standing way over there. Those are my two pieces over here, right? So where was everyone lined up at? In between those two, right? So I'm going to take my straight edge. And there's my line. So that line right there is going to be equidistant. Okay, everything on that line is equidistant from both points. So right here we have that person that was standing right in the middle. Right, Kevin? Yes. Okay, so we had right there in the middle. Then we also had people way at the end, right? Yeah. Everyone was equidistant that was along that line. So Here's a little bit of more vocabulary that goes along with this. So, a tick mark right here and right here. In geometry, that little mark right there, that one little tick mark, says that those two pieces are going to be congruent. Those two pieces are going to be the same. Now, if that takes care of the bisect part. How do I notate it? How do I write it to show that it is perpendicular? How do I show that that's perpendicular? There's a symbol for it. How do I put it on here? There's a symbol. The what? The giant T? No. There's already one that you guys have been using. Remember, what was perpendicular? What type of angle is perpendicular? A 90 degree angle. It's a right angle. Is there? There we go. The little box. That's what we needed. 
the little box to signify that this is a right angle. So there we go. So we have a perpendicular bisector. So the tick marks say that they are going to be congruent. So there's my bisect. The 90 degrees says that is going to be my perpendicular. It is a right angle there. All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Did everyone get this far? Yeah. Okay. Thing one and thing two. Did you guys have this? Hey, you guys have this on there now? Yeah. Yes. Let's take a look at your... Uh, where's that? It is a summary. Summary. Recall that all right angles is the angle that you make when you divide a straight angle into two congruence when, when, when it rings. All right. So, divide a straight angle into two congruent angles, two lines that intersect at right angles are called perpendicular. So now put this right here. Okay, but this one right here, that this AB here is my line, and this one here is perpendicular to that line. Perpendicular bisector of a given segment AB is a line through the midpoint of the segment perpendicular to it, okay? So, same things that we just did, you guys are gonna have to do later on to construct it on your own. All right, you guys, so it's time for that cleanup.